In today's video, we are going to create this little plant keeper robot using recycled materials and a bit of creativity. This video is part of my Of Druids and Droids series, where more is about to come. Let's see what we got here in this box. Some weapons, a cute stool I must admit. Let's just put you here. Oh, this guy actually reminds me of He-Man. And there I was, gathering some scraps of plastic that piqued my interest. While I dig through these parts full of parts, I constantly think of how to incorporate them in my build. So this could be a knee protection or armor. Here are quite a few bionic parts that can be useful for today's build. Whatever part catches my attention ends up in this pile. Not all of these parts will make it into today's kit bash, but the future will hold some more. Though they all look very interesting, I decided only on this. I went shopping in the basement, so now let's unpack my shopping cart. It all started with this tube. It's a packaging for deodorant. And because it's a natural and sustainable product, the packaging is made from paper. But rather than throw it away with a good feeling, I better keep it with a much better feeling. I guess crafters can understand my urge to hold onto things that may belong to the trash can. So with a little tantrum inside of this bottle, we can now snap it onto the robot's backpack. Fortunately, it's a perfect fit. This pack will go onto his back. My 3D pen will be useful for welding parts together or for creating even more parts to add to this build. Another part I found lying around. This can be the robot's watering apparatus. Now, where do we put the eye? Guess here's the best spot. In terms of locomotion, I got the idea of using three of these. They already look like legs to me, so I guess they are suitable for today's build. Just gotta find a way to attach them. Let's start because this is still a piece of garbage. And I start by gluing the lid to the base of this tube. Now it's time for me to attach the legs. For this I use my 3D pen I showed to you earlier. Wow. Because my first attempt wasn't successful, I tried something else. I scratched the surface to guarantee better adhesion. And then I got the idea of how to attach them properly. By making some little craters, you can just put the sphere right into and simply print around it. But make sure you keep an eye on the size of it. Always put the sphere back into for checking. That way you can press the joint right into the still warm and malleable filament so that the plastic embraces the sphere and the whole copies its shape nicely for a perfect fit. Now that I'm done with that, I want the surface to be more even and the printing lines to vanish. And that's where a wood burner is nice to have. This melts the plastic and ensures a flatter finish. I was trying to make some legs for him, but decided that designing it in Blender and later print it out would be a better solution if we want to achieve a nice and clean look, rather than this sloppy one. That's nice. Okay. 
Here are some more parts I found and I make use of that bionicle weapon thing. Because I really like the pipes right here. And of course a plant robot needs a ground digger machine. Which this crew can imitate quite well. Let us clue that onto here. I'm just putting in some super glue. Hope that works. I got inspired by Bill making stuff and so I purchased some beads. With beads you may add various finishing touches such as screws or nails to give your robot a more realistic appearance. These packs include a huge variety of beads and terms in various sizes and shapes. These are the pieces I decided on. Now we can assemble the robot's eye. To add some visual interest, I wrapped some cables around the legs. Still, there's a sizable margin. Foam clay is what I use to fill that. I'm now gluing the gems on so they resemble screws. I'm also adding some details to the plant backpack. This is to cork the closest of the bottle. By adding a dot of glue, we can sprinkle some grass on it. Here I am designing the legs 3 dimensionally to print them out with my resin printer. I now prime the robot with a matte black. I then apply some white to give the appearance of powder coating. For what it's worth, I think maybe the paint was too old. Otherwise, it wouldn't look like that. 
but this actually creates a wonderful surface that more closely resembles a machine. Have I already told you who or what this guy is? No? Okay, let me tell you a story while I keep crafting. You can just keep watching. This is a story about Winton, the Gravekeeper. Once, Cyberdynamics released a state-of-the-art gardening assistant, dedicated to nurturing and tending the vibrant flora of gardens or fields. But mostly the rich could afford this piece of mech. And the rich were also the ones who didn't appreciate the true potential of Botanics HA473. This model got used for tasks like watering their yards or cutting their roses. But they could do so much more. Some farmers were able to advance more quickly thanks to the additional workforce. They could help grow a whole farm, but that's not what I meant. These robots were capable of achieving so much if someone only could have seen their true being. There came a time when the majority of the robots featured in this series encountered difficulties in their survival. They struggled with errors and bugs. So did he, the robot in this video. Let's just call him Winton for now. I'll explain his name later on. He operated flawlessly as an assistant in a great Avania botanical garden, a place where nature and technology converged. But only until a catastrophic malfunction caused also him to be decommissioned and abandoned. A tragedy struck when a devastating electrical surge caused Winton's system to malfunction. Left to rust and gather dust in an old factory where every robot landed, his potential seemed lost. However, buried beneath the layers of neglect, his core programming and intelligence remained intact. Fate had something else for him in store. One day, an imaginative and resourceful individual went out and gathered some scraps of metal and robots to build a companion and to further expand his accommodation. Suddenly, he stumbled upon his carded parts and saw potential in them. As life was still breathing in his technical achievement, it was clear what to do. Deep within the robot's core, the essence of its purpose as a nurturing guardian remained. With a creative mind and a knack for repurposing, this individual began to assemble and kitbash the robot, breathing new life into its worn-out components. Some parts were integrated to provide enhanced ability and flexibility, where other components were meticulously connected to give Winton the ability to adapt and interact with its surroundings. The robot was roughly brought to shape again. Over time, he developed a deep sense of purpose even deeper than before. Determined to find a new task and meaning, Winton began to gather discarded materials from his surroundings. With the heart full of compassion and unwavering love for nature, Winton was no ordinary machine. Using his remaining functionality, he ingeniously repurposed those materials to rebuild himself into a unique and unconventional form. He merged with this remnants of broken machinery incorporating wires, gears and various discarded objects, creating a patchwork of reclaimed parts. One day, when he could walk again and went out with his individual, Winton discovered a small grapevine struggling to survive at Mr. Debris. Despite its dilapidated state, the grapevine managed to cling tenaciously to life, its leaves desperately reaching for sunlight. Moved by this resonant display of nature's will, Winton made a conscious decision of nurture and preserved the grapevine, recognizing the profound symbolism it represented. At this particular moment, Winton found himself executing the exact actions that had been inflicted upon him, and he profoundly acknowledged the assistance that had been previously extended to him. His rebuilder found him standing by this vine, looking down sadly. That's where he searched for a vessel that would hold the seedling. From that moment on, Winton carried this plant. He was just a nameless reconstructed robot beforehand. But at this point, he really became Winton. The boy's name Winton is of old English origin and means wine settlement. Now, transformed from a robot with only a serial name into Winton, a robot made to last. 
this extraordinary creature roams the world with a mission to heal, rebuild, and breathe life back into forgotten organisms. He embraces his origins as a trash turned treasure, inspiring to see the potential in what others might overlook. From the moment he sprouted into existence, a profound connection with the plant world awakened within his circuits. Winton possessed an innate understanding of plants, their needs and their language. This remarkable ability led to his role as a gardening assistant once again, working tirelessly to bring life and vitality to forgotten places to awaken green spaces. He and his builder went on an adventure. Together they envisioned a future where nature would thrive once more and where greenery would reclaim its rightful place in the urban landscape, just as before. They set out to establish a flourishing settlement, a sanctuary where Winton's gardening progress could be unleashed and new chapter of growth would unfold. Under his builder's guidance, they scouted for a perfect location to bring their vision to life. After careful consideration, they discovered an abandoned plot of land on the outskirts of the city. A once forgotten expanse of soil yearning to be revitalized. With determination in their hearts, they embarked on transforming this neglected space into a vibrant haven. They've been setting up a whole town where Winton could plant his little tendril and soon felt the excitement about the rich growth coming from the seedling. One day, there will be wine yards near this place. Days turned into weeks, and weeks into months, as Winton and his builder dedicated themselves to the flourishing settlement. With his symbiotic fusion of nature and machinery, Winton became an integral part of this settlement, but his deeds are much broader, reaching beyond the outskirts of town. One day, Winton's journey led him back to the remnants of the Great Avania Botanical Garden where he once served. He recognized his former home and, with a gentle touch, began restoring the damaged plants and healing the scars of their past. Together, he and his builder breathed life into the garden, transforming it into a thriving oasis once again. It serves a reminder that something discarded can be transformed into something extraordinary. It shows that even from the darkest moments, beauty can be reborn and life can flourish once again. Soon, their story will go on here on this channel. I want you to see what they've accomplished, such as a vine store and more. Thank you for joining me on this incredible journey of crafting and creativity. And also, thanks for 100 subs, this is incredible. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Until next time, keep crafting, keep exploring and keep nurturing the beauty around you. Bye.